I'm Ruthik Thakar, and I'm an engineer here at Palantir. Today, I'm going to show you the AIP Material Harmonization app, which you can find on our AIP Now product showcase. AIP Material Harmonization uses AI to extract and summarize relevant material properties and provide informed harmonization recommendations to skilled human operators for review. Using AIP to harmonize materials at scale can ultimately help you build more resilient supply chains, unlock true economies of scale, negotiate better prices with suppliers, and more. So let's dive in. Here, I'm in the AIP Material Harmonization app. We're going to look at a chemicals manufacturing example today, but this is broadly applicable and useful for manufacturing companies especially ones that have grown through acquisition and have a variety of silo systems with no master data. So here's my list of raw materials. The goal of harmonization is to actually create a material group or add a raw material to an existing group such that the groups can then become the source of truth for my organization. For example, I know that I can substitute one material within a group for another if there's a shortage. As you'll see, AIP is able to pull in data from a variety of different sources into a raw material ontology to provide the context needed to harmonize these raw materials. For each raw material, I can see I have a couple of metadata fields, like what source system it's coming from, in this case SAP or JD Edwards. I can also see what the cast number is. In chemicals, cast number is just a unique identifier for any sort of chemical substance, but this can easily be extended to other domains. I can also most crucially see what material group each of these materials is associated with. So if I go over to my Harmonize Material Groups tab, I can see I have two existing material groups. And my goal is to populate this page with raw material groups or assign raw materials to existing groups. Here, I can see I only currently have one material, sodium hydroxide, with a group. So let's get to harmonizing. Now, if I filter to see what other raw materials of sodium hydroxide I have, I can see the one down here actually doesn't have a cast number. Now, in a perfect world, we would have structured information for all of our materials, but in the enterprise context, this very often is not the case. If I click into this specific material, I can see a drill down view of all of the ontology properties that we have, as well as all of the material documents linked to this specific sodium hydroxide. For context, without AIP, we would need humans sorting through all of the material data from ERP systems, along with all of the material documents, like safety data sheets, to populate this information. So here, I have two data sheets coming from a supplier. However, one of them is in Spanish. As a global manufacturing company, I don't always have the luxury of having suppliers giving me material documents in the language that my employees speak. If the person looking through these documents doesn't speak Spanish, this is going to be a significant barrier to manually transcribing information for each of the materials to enable our harmonization efforts. There's also a broader problem here, scale. At the scale that an enterprise manufacturing org typically operates, we're talking about tens, if not hundreds of thousands of materials and all the information and documentation that characterizes those materials. So instead of having a team of subject matter experts manually go in and transcribe information from unstructured documents, I'm instead going to task my AIP agent with extracting these entities for me. This is going to allow me to get the information I need to harmonize my raw materials much faster and help scale my efforts. So if I click on this Extract Entities button, it will bring up a chain of thought such that as the AIP agent is actually going through, retrieving the documents, retrieving the relevant text in those documents, and then extracting entities, I can follow along as a subject matter expert and have full visibility into exactly what the agent is doing. Once this is finished, the agent will actually create a recommendation for each of the entities that has been extracted. This is really important because it helps to close the loop between my experts and AIP. I want my experts to be able to come in here and verify exactly what the output of the agent is, and then have the ability to interact with AIP in a rich way by verifying the information that it's extracting. I also want them to be able to see exactly what chain of thought it followed to get to that recommendation. And then if I'm confident, I can accept it, or I can reject this and provide my AIP agent with feedback so that it can continuously improve over time. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and accept the recommendation. What that's going to do is take all of the extracted entities and write them to my ontology. Now, 
I can always come in here and edit these as the expert if I want to, but this now starts to serve as a foundation for harmonization across materials and allows me to bypass all of the tedious manual tasks of transcribing data from safety data sheets, ones which often aren't even in the language that I know how to speak, thereby saving me a lot of time to focus on things that are more impactful for my company's bottom line. Now, if we go back to our raw materials page, we can see we now have structured information for this raw material. The next step is to actually generate raw material groups that this one material might be a part of. So by clicking this dropdown, I can go ahead and kick off the raw material group recommendation process. Now, without AIP, I would typically have to go through all of my raw materials and groups and use my expertise to figure out which ones might be functionally equivalent based on the structured information that I have. But here, what we're doing is leveraging the power of the ontology and AIP to surface recommendations of which material groups, based on the properties, might be functionally equivalent to my material. And similar to entity extraction, I can see as the expert exactly what chain of thought the agent is following, such that I have full visibility into the steps being taken. Once that's finished running, I can verify exactly what steps the agent took, and then I can see over here the recommendations for which material groups might be functionally equivalent with my raw material. So here I can see, along with the material groups, what confidence level AIP actually has, as well as a reasoning such that I can actually understand the thought process behind why this material group was recommended to me. I can see calcium hydroxide has a very low confidence, the form and storage conditions are similar, but the material has a different cast number, which is probably a dead giveaway that this is not actually the same material. So we can go ahead and reject that. Sodium hydroxide 60%, however, looks like the right fit here. I can confirm that based on the reasoning, and once I approve it, it will add my raw material to this material group. I can go ahead and repeat this process for all of my raw materials. In a production environment, what I likely want is for my experts to be able to come in here and just see each of these recommendations from AIP and be able to either approve or reject them. So now that you've gotten an idea of how AIP material harmonization works, let's take it for a spin and see what uploading your own documents and adding a new raw material looks like. Let's say I just acquired a new company, and that company has ethane as raw materials. I need to actually add this to my ontology along with the corresponding material information about it. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this document. You can select what type of document you want to add, whether it's a safety data sheet, certificate of analysis, or any other type of document you would like to extract entities from. In this case, I'm going to add a safety data sheet. By clicking Upload Document, I can either choose a file from my computer or just drag and drop it into this box here. So I'm going to add the safety data sheet for my new raw material. This is going to kick off AIP processing the document to fully integrate it into the ontology, which you can read more about by clicking this dialog. The first step is text extraction via OCR. It's then going to generate embeddings, which are sort of like barcodes for your text which allows the machine to easily identify the pieces of text that are relevant for things like search or giving an LLM text to extract entities from. This helps the LLM-based workflows essentially be more performant. And then the final step is ontologizing the data and contextualizing those documents with all of the raw materials and groups and everything else they're linked to within the ontology. Once the document has finished processing, you'll be able to proceed to the next step. But before you do, you can add some uh, metadata for the ontology, like a document description, who it was uploaded by, what type of document it is, etc. And just like all of the other ontology properties, this is very flexible and can be adapted to fit the specifics of your organization. The next and final step is to now associate raw materials in the ontology with the document that I've just uploaded. Now, like I mentioned, I'm trying to add a new raw material and its corresponding docs so I don't actually have an ethane raw material in my ontology to link to. So what I can do is click Create New Raw Material, give my new raw material a name, and once I create that, it's going to add an entry into my ontology, which I can then select to link to the document. Now in practice, this will likely be new raw materials coming in via the source systems like ERPs through data connections. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to do this step manually so that you can see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and link this to my new ethane raw material that I've just created. And then as a final step, I can review all of the changes that I've made. Once I'm satisfied, I can go ahead and add the documents. 
Now that we've seen the front end and added our own documents and raw materials, we're going to take a look under the hood to see how the AI magic is actually happening. Let's open up the entity extraction. We're going to land in an application with an AIP called Logic. AIP Logic is a developer interface that allows you to build LLM backed functions. It gives LLMs the ability to access tools and deterministic logic, as well as any of the context and data within the ontology that they need to be operationally meaningful, like for entity extraction, for example. At the top here, we have all of the inputs that we are passing in for entity extraction. So we're starting at a single raw material within the ontology, and then down below, we have the predefined logic that is backing the entity extraction that we saw earlier in the harmonization app. If I go ahead and start opening up these blocks, what you'll see is this is where you can start to type prompts to pass to an LLM and have it do some sort of task. We're first starting by grounding the LLM in its role, and we're giving it a persona, which in this case, since we're looking to do uh, chemical entity extraction, we're telling the LLM that it's an expert at doing entity extraction and harmonizing. We're then giving the LLM access to a specific set of tools. In this case, we want the LLM to extract the relevant text of each of the documents associated with the raw material that we gave it. So we're giving it access to two things. One is the ontology object, which is the document, and we're giving it access to a predefined function, which is a deterministic set of code that we've defined, which allows the LLM to extract just the relevant pieces of text from each of the documents. This is based on the query that we're passing it. So here you can see the specific query that we're giving it. It's just the ontology properties that we're looking to extract from the document text. You can add any properties that you like. For example, I could add flammability and then define it and give the LM context on what that property means. I can tell the LM uh, this just means whether the material is flammable or not. And what this is going to do is modify the specific text that the LM retrieves from the documents for entity extraction. Whatever, is, whatever text is retrieved, uh, we can then output as a variable that we're giving the name relevant text here, and we can define what the output type is going to be. This is really important, especially when you want these outputs to be interoperable with existing systems that expect a specific format. In this case, we're just outputting a string, but this can be any type of uh, primitive or even an object or object set. From here, we're taking that relevant text once again grounding the LLM in a role and persona, and then we're having the LLM go ahead and actually extract the specific entities that we care about from these documents based on the relevant text. So once again, here I'm going to add inflammability and give the LLM context on what that actually means. We're also giving the LLM an expected output format. In this case, this is just a simple uh, JSON such that we can use this to create entity recommendations downstream. You could easily modify this to fit a specific format that might make this interoperable with a system that you might want to push this data out to. So the idea here is you can set expectations on the output such that the output is actually meaningful beyond just being a chatbot. We're then taking those extracted entities and once again outputting them as string variables. And then finally, we're taking those entities and creating a recommendation. In this case, we're applying an action and then having that surface back up to the user. One thing to point out here is that the LM is actually able to access a variety of different tools that you can configure. We've seen the ability for LLMs to apply actions. Uh, they can also use calculators for any sort of arithmetic. They can call functions, which allows you to seamlessly blend deterministic logic with the stochastic LLMs. We can give them access to the current date or even give them access to specific ontology objects. So what I can do now is I can select a raw material that I want to run this for. In this case, I'm going to say sodium hydroxide 60%. And I can go ahead and run this. This is going to pull up a debugger view. This is similar to the chain of thought that we saw earlier in the user interface, but this is a lot more detail about the prompts and the specific inner workings that the LLM is following. You can think of this as sort of a developer view of the chain of thought. And so once again, we can follow along, we can see what ontology objects the LM is retrieving, and all of the steps that it's following. Today, we saw how AIP drives efficient, human-in-the-loop material harmonization that can outpace the entropy of day-to-day -day operations and unlock valuable downstream workflows. 
We also took a look under the hood to get a better understanding of how the app works, not to mention how it can be customized to fit your business. While we focus specifically on harmonizing raw materials today, you could easily extend this to other domains, including products, bombs, customers, or vendors. If you're interested in this workflow, you can request it in our AIP Now product showcase at aip.palantir.com, and our team will reach out to you. Thanks for watching, and happy harmonizing.